let's open up a new order. Same thing, uh, symbol, make sure that's okay. The volume numbers are, fanta are, are, are fantastic, the way that you want to have set up. And we actually, there's a way of changing that default from one. So we, if you prefer to have a different number of uh, lots that you're trading, we can actually set that up within the options. All right, stop loss and take profit. So I'm going to show, I'm going to do a pending order. Now we have different options for pending orders. I can do a buy limit, sell, a buy stop, and a sell stop. I'm going to go through each one to make sure that you are you're familiar with the terminology and you're actually doing what you what it is that you'd like to do. Okay. So start off with a buy limit. With a buy limit, the you you expect. You, or what, you're, what, what you want to do is buy cheap. That's probably the best way to put it for buy limit. You anticipate the price is going to go down and then you expect a reversal. So as an example here, looking at this particular scenario here, rather than putting in a, a buy order right now, anticipating that's going to move up, it may retrace downwards and find another level of support right along here. So essentially creating a double bottom. So what if that's the case, if I anticipate it's going to drop down, I may want to put a pending order, the fact that it gets around this level here, that it will I will actually execute a buy order. So in order to do that, it's called a buy limit. So the price the price to drop down and then go back up. So have a buy limit, it comes down and goes. That's what buy limit is. A sell limit is the opposite. I anticipate the price is going to go up. For example, here, let's say I anticipate this is level resistance. I anticipate the price is going to go up, and then it's going to fall right down. And I get that indication based on looking at various time frames, whatever line studies and indicators that I may have, or if I'm using price action, I think it's going to go down. So at this point, I put in a sell limit. So I think basically saying that the price is going to go up, 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 and I'm going to have a turnaround here, and I want to put in a sell order once it reaches a price point right around here because I think it's going to go back down. That would be a sell limit. Then we have a buy stop. A buy stop would mean that once price has gone up to a certain level, I anticipate that's going to go blow through that level, but at first it needs to prove that it can get to this level here, and then I want to put in a buy order because I expect that it will continue the upward move. That's a buy stop. A sell stop would mean the opposite. For example, here, let's say the, I think price is going to go down. It may bounce up, but in case there is additional momentum to bring the price down, I want to be ready for that, so I'll put in a sell stop right here, which means that I think that price is going to go down and just blow right through it and keep on plummeting. In that case, I put a pending order for a sell stop. So. Let's put in a, just for visual, I'll put in a, a buy stop at around this support level right here. So 4564. Expiry. I can choose to have this expire after whatever point in time that I would like. So if it's only good for today, once uh, the day ends based on the server time from Alpari, the, play, the trade will be be cancelled or be deleted instead of the next day. I'll just place that. Here we go. Now it's telling me that this pending order was successfully placed. And you can see here is my buy stop. Now this appears below the active trade. So you can see the new order number here, the time that it was placed, what is a buy stop? Now you'll notice as I go along here, there is no activity because it hasn't been executed as of yet. So once price actually hits my 45, uh, sorry, 45, 650, and it keeps going, the trade will be executed. Then this will actually go above the line, and then we'll start seeing the activity associated with it. That's pretty much it, guys. Oh, now let's say before I sign off here, 
let's say you didn't want this anymore. You looked at it, uh, you don't think it's gonna reach up there anymore and you just wanna get this off the books in case there's a bit of a spike and it goes back down with your buy stop. You, you, all you can do is you can right click, modify or delete. Here I can delete. Gone. Hit okay. You notice it comes off the table. There we go. Now let's say, one thing I didn't touch upon in, uh, earlier on when we actually executed this particular trade, so we have a stop loss here. Let's say I had a larger stop loss or a, I wanted to capture as many pips as possible. I can put in trailing stop. So to do that, I right click, choose trailing stop, and I can choose how many points it trails. So if price goes up by 120 points, my stop loss will go to break even. And if it goes up to 125 points, my stop loss now would go up five points. And it keeps on trailing it. Now one thing to note, let's I'll click that, it changes to yellow, so it indicates that there is a trailing stop on that particular order. One thing to note, everyone, if you turn off your computer, this trailing stop function will no longer work. Your, your computer has to be turned on and connected to the net, to the server, to be able to actually execute. These commands are computer ex executed. They're not, they don't happen on the server side automatically, okay? So if you turn off your computer, do not expect this to function anymore. You have to keep your computer on. Just a, a warning, guys. All right, so that's it for executing trades. We'll see you in the next video.